we definitely sucked in this game. So <laughs> there's, there's no excuse on our end. What's going on guys? If you wanna support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. Before we jump into this one, I just want to announce we do have our uh, giveaway for Streets of New Capenna going on right now. We have started it very, very early, I know, uh, but with the new spoilers that came out last week, I thought now was a good time to go ahead and announce that. You have got two months to enter for this one, but we do have a giveaway video uh, up on the channel as well as an article over on our website, itresolvesmtg.com. Highly encourage you to check those out subscribing is one way to enter uh but there are multiple so please do check all of that out but let's talk about today's deck guys it's naya humans um we actually have played a, a couple of aggro decks a couple of naya decks but we haven't really played the naya humans deck since the uh kamigawa release and so i thought you know what let's give this one a shot there's not a whole lot of like kamigawa stuff in this uh in this deck aside from a couple of you know legendary lands but uh it is a really good deck it's a tried and true classic at this point in standard in my opinion and so it is one that i thought hey we should probably revisit and see how it's doing right now and i'll be honest it looks like it's set up to do pretty well so uh to talk through this obviously we've got a heavy skew towards white here uh, especially in the early turns of the game the one and two drops are exclusively white uh we've got the hopeful initiate as our our single one of you know kind of thing uh for the one drop slot here but it's a one two for one with training so it's going to hopefully grow as we continue through the game uh and then on top of that you can remove some counters to destroy an artifact or enchantment that alone that ability alone i think is really important uh those those one one counters don't have to be from the hopeful initiate and they deal with artifacts and enchantments, both of which, uh, especially enchantments right now, are very prevalent because of the new Kamigawa set. Uh, and so I actually think this card is very, very well positioned in the meta uh, and very happy to see it here. Intrepid Adversary, obviously a big lord for the board is the idea here. Uh, you can just play it for two and you've got a 3-1 lifelinker, which is perfectly fine. However, uh, ideally you'd like to be able to bolster up your board with that extra ability uh, throw some counters on it and get some one ones uh, or plus one plus one counters on everything essentially uh, Luminar Casperant gonna be throwing around those one one counters. We've seen this for a long time and it's a fantastic card uh, Thalia a card that you know we we see in these kinds of decks really often because it obviously makes a lot of sense in these kinds of decks uh it slows down non-creature spells in general it's also a first striker and so when you throw those one one counters on it it actually becomes a much heavier threat than a lot of other you know just a a regular one one or a regular three one or whatever that first strike makes it really difficult to deal with in combat uh which is huge so very happy to see this here of course as the full four uh now Kind of counterintuitive to having Thalia in the deck. We do have Valorous Stance, but again, keeping in mind that these are very much like, I, I believe, the only non creature spells, yeah, in the deck. Uh, and just as a two of. So it's not necessarily going to be a, a situation we see a lot happen, but it is a card that will get taxed with Thalia, but still something that is very useful for our deck. You can give Indestructible to a creature or destroy target creature with toughness four or greater. That's both, both of those are very lucrative for our deck. And so we definitely want to have those here. Uh, in the three drop slot, more usual suspects, Brutal Cathars, Elite Spellbinders, and Adelin. Uh, Adelin being one of my favorites uh, personally for these kinds of decks. Uh, but uh, we also have Minsk, uh, Beloved Ranger, which is not a card surprisingly that I've, I think ever played with. I might have played with it once. Uh, three, three for three, when it enters the battlefield, create Boo, a legendary one, one red hamster token with trample and haste absolutely adorable token uh you can pay x until the end of the turn target creature you control gets base power and toughness xx becomes a giant in addition to its other types so this gives us a mana sink for later on down the road uh if we find ourselves top decking which we often probably will with this list uh being able to sink some mana into minsk here and uh buff up our creatures especially boo uh with that trample uh is very very good um, unfortunately only as a sorcery, so we can't activate it at instant speed, but still very good. Uh, and then finally in the four drop slot, some other usual, usual suspects, 
We got the big two, three partners with first strike reach, throwing out some one, one counters. And then of course we've got Sigarda really taking advantage of that coven ability here and that Lord ability for all of our humans. So all of this looks very, very good. You can see we've got a very, very uh, careful mana base here. We'll say we do have Cave of the Frost Dragon, Seed of the Empire, uh, the Besiju who endures. And that's about it, nothing too crazy. But I'm very excited to try this out, guys. I think this could be a very good deck right now. Uh, and so I wanna see how we can do with it. So let's go ahead, let's jump into game one. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And uh, a bit of a slower hand in terms of no one drop, but I don't think we should shoot for that. We've only got that single one drop, uh, and so expecting that every game is very unlikely. I think as long as we've got the two into the three, I think we're actually okay. Uh, and this is actually pretty perfect because we do have all colors of mana, which means we can actually hit the beloved ranger on schedule, uh, which is pretty perfect for us. Uh, and then being able to Thalia something here is very good as well. Uh, interesting, so they we drew that after the fact, but that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and drop that Thalia here. Again, this is going to tax them, so anytime they try and kill something, which they probably will at some point, uh, it's going to be a little bit more hard or more difficult on their mana. Uh, but then we can also just block this freely at this point, uh, and so we really don't have to worry as much. Uh, Mints coming down is really nice as well, just because it's an easy two for one, uh, and that we get two creatures for the price of one. <laughs> uh, and so I will happily take that. We do have the Elite Spellbinder as well, uh, and so that might be something we consider just throwing down just to tax their hand a little bit. Um, let's see, do we want to go for the Spellbinder? I think we do. Uh, let's go ahead and slow them down a little bit, uh, see what they've got here. Yeah, uh, that's really good. All of these are quite good. Um... I'm actually not as worried about that. I feel like the Crippling Fear is the card that we get out of hand. Uh, and I'm actually not going to attack here. Again, I don't want to leave them open to free attacks. Uh, when they have the Ninjutsu deck, I'm not thinking that uh, us being overly aggressive right away is the best option. I think what I'd rather do is leave that Thalia up for basically a free block when we know they have no removal. This being slowed down to the level that it is is also going to be very helpful for us because... They're stuck on land. They don't have anything. Uh, and so, oh, well, there we go. Uh, but this really is going to be a big slowdown for them, uh, which is helpful for us. Uh, now, there we go. We needed a white source and we got one. That was absolutely perfect. Um, what do we want to do? Um, so I think we do this. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and throw some counters here. Um, and I am going to attack in. We need to start getting aggressive here, in my opinion. We can actually double block this. These both have first strike. Uh, and so I'm not actually that worried about um, them attacking in with this as much. Uh, we can certainly kind of deal with that. And then, you know, if they ninjutsu something out, sure, that's fine. But we're still going to be throwing a lot of counters around. Uh, and that's important. Importantly, something we can do is Minsk uh, and then set ourselves up for a much stronger play later in the game as well. Um, again, that mana sync is perfect. Perfect, perfect. And there we go, guys. We got the win. Heck yeah. Uh, looks like they were kind of stuck on some things. So worked out great for us. That was perfect. Let's jump into a game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And uh, yeah, this is pretty easy keep. I mean, we've got the one and we do skip the two drops, of course, here. But uh, we actually have some really good three drops and, of course, uh, the partners here on four. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, we also off of the branch, uh, br uh, the boulder loft pathway. Wow, I cannot talk this morning. Still waking up, guys. It's early, uh, as you can tell. All right don't love this uh that makes me think is it is potentially the way that they are going here uh which is obviously a potential problem um we'll attack in i am gonna throw this out i don't know that this is the right play but i do want to keep things going yeah i figured they had something all right 
Uh, let's go for this. Let's go for that elite spellbinder. They probably have another counter. Uh, another Dwari disruption. Wow. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm kind of okay with this though. Like they're not doing much other than countering our stuff, uh, which is annoying, but you know. Sorry for the uh, nasally. Uh, let's do this. Definitely feeling a little, uh, not sick, but just like allergy related stuff going on. You know what I mean? It's one of those days. They have dragon's fire. They reveal that gold span dragon. Sure. So good news, bad news here. We do have the brutal Cathar to deal with this, um, but they are going to get treasure tokens in response. Um... And if they do kill it, we've got a double up, so. We go ahead and take that. All right. Hope they don't have another one. Ah, Leer, okay. Stick in Dragon's Fire on this, yep. Um, annoying, not the end of the world. This is very loud, by the way, uh, in my ear. Uh, let's Brutal Cathar one more time. Oh, they have Jawari Disruption. Ugh. They didn't play it. Uh, interesting. Okay. Well, they must have another just burn spell here. Or they can just... Ah, yep. All right. Well, they kind of are just wrecking us. We're also pretty stuck on land here, which is frustrating. Um, if we had any land, we could get something down but we've drawn basically every four drop we could have that's not gonna help us i'm really surprised they're not jwari disruption ing but i guess they just don't need to i'm gonna go ahead and good game them here they just definitely have us yeah that was a quick quick game man we lost that was really really bad uh all right cool let's jump into game three all right guys here we are for game number three uh these are going pretty quickly i think this is an okay keep we can lead on the aspirant uh which i do think is the right call and then we have got brutal cathar to follow that up looks like oh no okay uh i thought it was gonna be a mono green deck but obviously not the case uh which is perfectly fine um hmm doesn't really matter which one we go with there so i'll go ahead and do this we will lead with the aspirant and get that counter on that um they will definitely have removal in this deck <laughs> uh there's basically no way they don't um so i'm thinking we're gonna have a bit of a rough time but that brutal cathar might help us out we'll see uh we do have the minsk available next turn as well we can drop that farmland and drop that down okay yeah. Uh, I mean, very good, but yeah, please attack in. Please, please, please. <laughs> uh, that's a good later on card, actually. I'm pretty happy to see that. Um, so I think what we do is Brutal Cathar on one of the tokens, potentially. Does that work enough, though? Because they can just drop another creature. Yeah, I think we do it. Um, I think this is just the safe play for sure. So go ahead and get a token out of there. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put the, the counter here. That token just is gone now, which is why that's, I think, very important. And here, if they want to double block, we two for one, we kind of take care of the board here. That just means it's going to be trickier for them to activate that Asika's Chariot, which is kind of where I want them to be, if that makes sense. Um, I'm also expecting heavy removals, so trades like that, where we're getting a nice little two for one, I'll take all day. Um, wow, okay. So they could have kept the old one and actually gotten a free attack in. That was a bit of a mistake on their end, I believe, but that's fine by me. Um, all right, let's drop this. Let's go ahead and drop the champion. Um... Now the question is, do we attack in here? I do. I think I do. Oh no, this is stupid. Guys, 
I'm not doing so hot. <laughs> yep, that's a free block. That was really dumb. Uh, that was just ridiculously silly. But yeah, I was thinking, no, they can't activate this. They just played it. It's a vehicle. Of course they can. Uh, it's a mistake. All right. It's cool, though. We'll see what the opponent has for us here. Ren and Seven is pretty scary. Uh, they get that tree folk. That's very, very good. Uh, the... The nice thing we have are these intrepid adversaries, but we'll see how this actually goes. They're going to copy this token. Um, I'm not going to block as much as I really want to. Uh, I think it's best not to at the moment. Um, let's do this. And I think this is just the only play we can really make uh, is to auto pay for one. Yep. Um, and say no attacks here. We're definitely under some major pressure here. That chariot is a problem. We we really screwed up by attacking. I don't think, like I think that still would have us in a bad place, but that really would have helped us out a good bit. So we're not seeing much removal from them, are we? All right, fair enough. Maybe the early trades were bad. Um, yep. This is super scary. I'm curious to see if they activate the chariot just to get the free attack in for the token. Um, we can obviously kill the chariot, but like it's still a free token, basically. All right, hear me out. We're gonna we're gonna take twelve <laughs> because we messed up so hard. Uh, we're taking twelve. All right. Good news is this does have trample, so we could fight through but that seems bad um so we pay two yeah i mean hey this is a lot but uh it's not gonna be enough this is lifelink damage which is helpful um I think we do this, but they obviously just block with an Eye Witch, which is fine. Like, that doesn't really matter. Um, if they had a Deadly Dispute, man, that would have been really bad for us, because they could have just, you know, Deadly Dispute it, which we know they have in the deck. They could have done that just to negate the damage. There's the Mascot Exhibition. So I'm assuming they have their next land, uh, which throws these up to 7-7s. Seven sevens. Yep. I mean, we're pretty dead. <laughs> um, yeah. Turns out a Seekers Chariot plus Ren and Seven is still good, in case you were not sure. Um, yep. Wow. Okay. Pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, so we definitely block there. This sucks really bad, but we basically have to do this. Yep. I don't think there was a better option there, and we're just dead next turn. There's literally nothing we can have, I don't think, here. Um, why? That was n not necessary at all. Uh, there was literally no reason they needed to do that, but sure. If anything, that gave us a better chance of winning. They should have just gone for the uh, the mascot exhibition. They would have had it. They whiff. That's good. So, kind of good news, bad news. We can kill this. Uh, we can play this. Uh, and this can just attack here. So now if they do want to create a tree folk, they have to kill the Renin 7. That's kind of our best bet. It's literally our only bet. <laughs> so now they just mascot exhibition. Yep. Yeah. 
and they're plus them up. Wow, they got a lot of lands out of that. That was really good. So we can actually kill that. And in fact, we can do both here. We have to do that just to kind of get the attack in, I think. Uh, so where do we throw the counters? I think it's here. And if they want to double block, they can. Uh, if they don't, then they're just going to kill one of these, I assume, just to hold on to that Renin zone. Sure. Okay. I mean, yeah, there's not a lot. I mean, we're under some massive pressure at this point because we're at 10, basically, and they have a Renin 7 on the field, and there's not a lot we can do. Uh, we could have thrown the counters on Boo, but they would have just traded. Um, yep. So then they minus this to get that Tree Folk as a blocker. They just have this. Okay. Yep. So big. Uh, <laughs> like, how do we deal with that? Um, this has flying, so it really doesn't matter. Like, this can still block it. I don't know. We're pretty dead here, guys. It really doesn't matter that much. <laughs> yeah, we killed Ren. Alright, but we're, like, super dead here. This did transform, which is nice. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They've got a 10-10, guys. Like, there's literally... And they just get to bring back whatever they want. Sure. Sorry, Boo. I think you're going down. This is a rough game. They easily could have won it without sweeping. I don't really know why they swept. That seems like a really bad play, but... Uh, we definitely sucked in this game, so <laughs> there, is, there is no excuse on our end. We definitely messed this one up pretty hard, but I really don't know that we would have had a good fighting chance anyway. Uh, this has been a, a, a pretty rough one. Um, and I think we're seeing a pattern here that we're going to talk about in the wrap-up, which isn't necessarily with this deck, but actually the previous deck. Um, okay. Uh, and I think, I think it's very interesting. All right, let's just drop everything. Because why not? I mean, it doesn't really matter where we throw this, you know? We can't attack. We do get to exile the token here, which is nice. So now they're kind of forced to sweep. Uh, but they get something back. Like, it's not a situation where we can really do that much. We play two just to flip this, but then they just sweep. Um, and I guess this does count. So, yeah, they get Ren and Seven back. This is rough so rough um and they're not the frustrating thing is they're not just finishing the game like they very easily could have by now i think this just seems kind of silly like just attack in with lair why wouldn't you just do that yeah i'm gonna concede here guys all right let's chat about this deck all right so overall a pretty bad score uh, one and two was the record, and that did not go as well as I was necessarily expecting. But I do want to say, uh, despite misplays, aside from that, because there were plenty of those, uh, plenty, 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 plenty. Um, what I would suggest about this list is that, uh, because it's based on just, like, very, um, overly aggressive humans most of the time, so you're trying to get a lot of 1-1 counters out, you're trying to get these little humans out and then bolster them up, the problem you have is uh, just like Prismari commands, like take them out. I mean, we saw that with Is It Dragons, you know, like it's very, very easy to just deal with one thing, which deals with a lot more things because of the way the deck works. Like if you deal with an adversary, you're probably 
taking down a lot of power level on the field as a whole. Um, and there's a lot of burn spells, there's a lot of removal spells, there's a lot of things that deal with all of that. And unfortunately, I think that's just the meta right now. I don't even know that that's like a, a fault of the deck, because I think that's something you should expect out of this style deck. Um, but it's just not something that you can easily deal with when you're a Naya Humans deck and all you have are creatures, aside from two spells. Uh, and those two spells don't do that much uh, against some of those things. Certainly some, but not a lot. Uh, and so for me, I think that's just the, the reality of running a Naya Humans list is that you're going to run into that. Uh, and unfortunately, we did multiple times. Uh, Blood on the Snow on that last deck, and then of course, just all the burn in the world uh, against Is It Dragons. So fair enough. You know what? It wasn't that great, um, but we still had a fun time playing it. And honestly, I really like these, these Naya Humans lists or just Humans lists in general because they do feel really good to play when they get going. Um, the fact that you can build up your board in multiple different ways, get counters out, do all that kind of stuff. The synergistic side of it is oh, just amazing. Uh, but all that to say, guys, not a great time, but it still was a, uh, a fun time to play. Just not a great uh, record, I should say. Uh, don't forget, guys, we do have our giveaway going on right now for Streets of New Capenna. We're giving away a draft booster box. Uh, please do check out all the details here on the channel uh, or on our website. But I love you all very much. I'll see you again very soon. Have a fantastic day.